we're looking at ways to tell whether elements in a sentence are what are called restrictive elements, which therefore must not be set off by commas, uh, or whether they are non-restrictive elements and therefore must be set off uh, by commas. Uh, now let's look at some more examples that will help us get our, get our minds around this problem. Uh, let's look at this sentence. Rain, which falls on Tuesdays, makes me sad. Are these commas correct or are they incorrect? Well, one way that I've already suggested uh, using would be to sort of have a, a kind of mental Venn diagram uh, of, this, uh, uh, of this situation. If we take, first of all, the set rain, uh, and if that represents all things that, uh, that uh, are included in the set rain, what about the set rain which falls on Tuesdays? What does that look like? Uh, well, we know that rain, in fact, falls on each of the seven days, uh, given enough time. So rain which falls on Tuesdays is going to be a subset of rain. So we have rain and rain which falls on Tuesdays. That means that which falls on Tuesdays restricts uh, the meaning of rain, and therefore it is called restrictive, and therefore it must not be surrounded by commas. Because these commas here, what do they say? They say that all rain is rain which falls on Tuesdays. That the set rain and the set rain which falls on Tuesdays are identical. Because if you put commas here, <coughs> you're saying which falls on Tuesday uh, is non-restrictive. That is, that it adds nothing uh, new to our notion of what rain is. So this says that all rain falls on Tuesday. Now, another test you can run in your head if you're trying to figure out is this, you know, do I put commas, is this restrictive or is this non-restrictive, uh, would be as follows. Uh, try out a couple of sentences. One would be rain, which, by the way, falls on Tuesdays, uh, makes me sad. You know, rain, which that stuff that, you know, by the way, falls on Tuesdays. That, that's just an inessential uh, addition. How about this sentence, though? Rain which falls on Tuesdays, as opposed to rain which falls on Wednesdays, makes me sad. Now, which of those two sentences are you happier with? Rain, which, by the way, is that stuff that falls on Tuesdays, makes me sad, or Rain which falls on Tuesdays, as opposed to rain which falls on Wednesdays, makes me sad. Well, I hope it's the latter, that, uh, that it's rain which falls on Tuesdays, as opposed to rain falling on other days, is the thing that makes you sad. And if the as opposed to sentence works, that means the element you're talking about is restrictive. And if it's restrictive, that means there must not be commas. If the by the way sentence works, that means the element you're testing is non-restrictive and it must be surrounded by commas. Let's look at a couple uh, more examples. Uh, Shakespeare's play Hamlet is a tragedy. Whoop, that should be underlined. Uh, Shakespeare's play, Hamlet, is a tragedy. Now, for some reason, uh, it, the, a lot of people have the notion that if you have a title, it, you just always surround it with commas. That is not true. You have to ask yourself the same kinds of questions uh, about titles as about any other kind of grammatical element. So, if we think about the set of things, Shakespeare's play, is that the same as Shakespeare's play Hamlet? No, because Shakespeare's play, if I say Shakespeare's play, do you know that I mean Hamlet? No, because he wrote a lot of them. Uh, so in fact, when you say Shakespeare's play 
Hamlet is a tragedy. What you mean is Shakespeare's play Hamlet, as opposed to his play A Midsummer Night's Dream, is a tragedy. So Hamlet here is likewise restrictive. Shakespeare's play Hamlet is a tragedy. Uh, you, you can't say Shakespeare's play, which, by the way, you know, is Hamlet. That's what Shakespeare's play is. No, he's got a lot of plays. But suppose there's somebody named Bruno. I mean, there is somebody named Bruno, but let's say a fictional Bruno. And Bruno has written one and only one novel, Burlap. That's the title of his novel. Bruno's novel, Burlap, is a bore. Given the title, that's not surprising. Uh, but Bruno's novel, Burlap, is this correct? Because remember, we took the commas away from being around uh, Hamlet. But here, what, you've, what is the set? If this is the set, Bruno's novel, the things that could be Bruno's novel, and, and what would happen if you said, well, what does the set Bruno's novel Burlap look like? It's exactly the same, because Bruno only has one novel, Burlap. So Bruno's novel, which, by the way, is Burlap, uh, is a bore. That is correct, because he only has one novel. Uh, you can't say Bruno's novel Burlap as opposed to Bruno's novel Huckaback, uh, is a bore because Bruno never wrote another novel called Huckaback or anything else. So burlap is a non-restrictive element because as soon as you've said Bruno's novel, you've said everything there is to say for identifying that thing. And this thing, burlap, the title of it, doesn't restrict the information anymore. So you can't you can't solve this problem by saying. Well, is it a title or is it a subordinate clause or, you know, that you put commas around subordinate clauses but not around nouns? There's no such rules as that. You simply ask yourself for whatever kind of element it is, is it restrictive or is it non-restrictive?